Okay, uh, welcome back, everybody. We have um, now, we are now today moving into uh, chapter five of our book, uh, in which we actually encounter for the very first time the derivative. Okay, and much of uh, the machinery that we've been building up for this uh, in this course uh, has been heading towards being able to understand the concepts of, of calculus. Uh, but, of course, in a, with attention to uh, being very rigorous about some of the definitions. So um, let's uh, define the derivative. This is our plan. We want to understand the derivative and uh, what, it, uh, what it means. So last time we talked uh, about the last few lectures, we were talking about continuous functions, and now we're interested in uh, understanding when functions are what are called differentiable. So let's make a definition. Uh, we're going to be dealing now with real valued functions. So suppose we have a function that's defined on some interval, a, b, a closed interval, and it spits out a real number. We're going to say that this function is differentiable If uh, the following, okay, I have to say where, at x in this interval, a, b, I'm going to say it's differentiable at x if uh, this limit exists. Okay, so notice that whatever I'm about to say, uh, I'm about to say that some, we're going to call this function differentiable if some limit exists. And so the concept of uh, taking the limit uh, of some function uh, is actually very important in this definition. So what uh, function am I going to take the limit of? Well, I'm going to take the limit of a, a certain function that's a quotient. It's a quotient of f at t minus f at x over t minus x. And if this limit exists, we're going to say this function is differentiable at x. We'll demand that t be somewhere inside. So t is approaching x, but t is not x. OK, so that's something we're going to demand. And if this limit does exist, we'll, note, we'll give this uh, limit a name. We'll call it f prime at x because this limit may depend on x. Okay, so here's our definition of what's called the derivative. So this uh, limit is called the derivative of f at x. And it's a function of x. Okay, so that's our first uh, basic definition. Now, I know everybody has seen this definition before, although often in, uh, in other textbooks, this is, limit is rewritten in a, a slightly different way. Sometimes you say limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay? So, the picture that you might have in, in, in your mind is something like the following. If I take the graph of, uh, of some function, the function might look like so. And I want to understand, let's say, what's happening at a particular point x. This is the x-axis. And uh, compare that to what's happening nearby. You might call this nearby point x plus h, or you might call it t. And if I compare what's happening, then f of t minus f of h is basically the difference in the uh, height of this function, uh, of this graph of this function. And t minus x is the uh, distance between t, is the length, the, the interval between t and x, that length. So it's the rise over run. So you can think of it, if you like, as the slope of this secant line. 
And now what I do in this limit is I say, hey, look, look at the slope of the secant line as I let t get closer and closer to x. Okay. So um, this particular expression is a slope <coughs> of a secant line. And we're now taking the limit of these slopes of these lines. So if that limit exists, well, let's see. In this case, this has a certain slope. And now the next, if I let t get closer, these lines seem to, their slopes seem to converge, at least in this particular picture. And so do you see then that if we have a lim limit, it's basically going to be, in some sense, the instantaneous limit uh, of this, uh, if you could put a secant line here that was very, very, um, oh, um, s that subtended uh, 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 the the the, uh, the points right at x and a point very close nearby, you'd get the slope of this line, which if you can, we, we often call the tangent line. So this thing has slope f prime at x. Okay, that's the idea. Now, of course, do you see on this side that if you did the same thing with t coming from the left, that you'd get secant lines that look like this? But at least in this picture, those things also converge. Their slopes also converge. Do you see that? Okay. Okay, this is to be contrasted with, for instance, another picture where maybe your function f of x uh, looks something like this. So there's a function. Certainly uh, seems to be, um, well, it's a function. It's continuous here, in fact, at x. But what's happening if I look at the slope of the secant lines? Well, if you look at any secant on the right-hand side, because this line happens to be straight, you just get that slope, right? Take the limit from the right, well, that limit from the right actually exists. It converges to this slope. The limit from the left exists for the same region, reason, and it converges to this slope. But does the limit exist if you consider t on both sides? No. So in fact, this function is not differentiable, which I'll abbreviate diffbull, at the point x. OK? Ball. At the left endpoint of the interval? Yeah, so if the domain happened to just include everything from x onward, then this thing would be differentiable at the left endpoint, okay? According to the definition. Okay, you want t to be in the, in the interval, but not, not the, the actual point itself, okay? Yeah, so. And of course, that, that should make sense to us, because if, if this thing weren't, if I'm only considering this interval, then that limit does exist, right? Because there's nothing, we're not considering anything outside the domain, right? OK, good. So this is corresponds with, hopefully, what you remember from calculus. So here's some questions that I'll throw out just to see if we're on the same page. So if f is continuous on some interval, uh, is f uh, differentiable necessarily on some interval? Oh, and what does it mean to be differential on an interval? I just mean is it, it's differentiable everywhere inside. Is this necessarily true? No. Can you see an example? Yes, right here. So clearly, no. Look at that example. OK, second question. If f is differentiable uh, on some interval, uh, must f be continuous? On that interval? Some people 